Welcome to the Information Nation podcast, the official podcast of the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management, Division of Fish and Wildlife, brought to you by the Hunter Education Office. I am your host with the most from the East Coast, Dana Kopek. Our guest for this month is Ed Lombardo, longtime aquatic resource volunteer and fly fishing guide. Ed, welcome. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad I'm going to be here today, and, and uh, uh, I'm glad you invited me, and we can uh, share a lot of things that we have done together. Excellent. So to start us off, um, how about telling us where you're from? Well, I was uh, originally, of course, born here in Rhode Island, uh, Providence, and I've been here all my life, grown up, uh, go- going to public schools, and, and then, of course, college, uh, Roger Williams University here in Bristol, and I think Rhode Island is one of the, the best states uh, uh, anywhere in our country. Uh, we have so many wonderful resources, uh, specifically, uh, of course, when we talk about fly fishing and, and both fresh and salt water venues. So I believe that um, we're extremely fortunate to be in little Rhode Island, but there's so, so much that's available to uh, the fly fisher and sports uh, in, in general. I agree. It really is a gem that a lot of people overlook. So when and how did you get started in fly fishing? Uh, When I was five years old, my mom and my dad on a Sunday afternoon um, uh, took me uh, fishing at uh, Twin Rivers in North Providence. And uh, we had, uh, uh, I had a a little spinning rod with uh, uh, daubers and worms and I caught five or six bluegills. And it was, I mean, at five, five and a half years old, it was just uh, a, a, a wonderful experience, and, and quite honestly, like many people say, I was hooked for life for, as far as fishing is concerned. Uh, about uh, when I was uh, 13 years old, I, um, Dana, I had a, a paper route in Providence, and uh, I would uh, peddle papers and, and save my money. And uh, in those days, every corner was it looks like every other corner had uh, a little convenience store. And these convenience stores maybe had a soda jerk. You could get a soda or a coffee. And, but they had some groceries, etc. And they also had magazine racks. And at 13 years old, I would go in, uh, buy some uh, groceries rather, or get a soda. And, and I would always look at the magazine rack for sports. And this particular... One time I was there, and I, and I see uh, these magazines, Outdoor Life and Field and Stream. And, and this one particular cover uh, had a, a different type of fishing rather than spin fishing. And, and I, I was curious to see the rod look different, the reel look different. And so I, I bought the magazine. I think back then it was something like 25 cents. And uh, the cover really attracted to me because it was a gentleman fishing in a small New England type stream and it was just the surroundings were absolutely beautiful and we know that the fly fishing uh, to just jump a, a little bit off of what I, I'm, I'm saying but we I, we always tell our students and we tell people at the schools that uh, fly fishing 95% of the time will always put us in beautiful spots okay beautiful areas and so that's just another great attribute to our uh, which I think is the the greatest sport ever invented so anyway, I get this magazine and I'm, I'm reading and, and it, I, it, it's, it's, a, it's a couple of articles on fly fishing. And so later on, uh, a year or so later on, I, I, I noticed uh, I was getting these magazines and they, they advertised um, their Outdoor Life Book Club. And so I saw the books that were uh, available uh, traditionally and, and basically for fly fishing in, in particular. And I went to my father, I said, Dad, I said, um, is it all right if I join Outdoor Life Book Club? And he said, son, he says, he says oh, books, I, I, that's a good idea. He says, but what is that? And I says, well, it's a, it's a book club I can join. And I think uh, uh, every month I have to pay anywhere from $1.75 to $2 for a book. And I, and I want to learn a little bit more about um, fly fishing. He says, oh, by all means, he says, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that. And he says, I'll, and if you can't come up with the $2, I'll, I'll help you out. So anyway, uh, I started the book club, which I was so excited about. And um, as you know, Dana, back then, um, back so oh, some, uh, I would say, uh, 60 years now, we, the, we, we didn't have computers like we have today. 
Right. You know, with the advent of the computer, as you know, you can just about research and learn so, so many different uh, uh, topics. And as a matter of fact, we, at our schools that we do, during the introductions, as you know, we tell, we, we, we bring that up to our students that, that are there. So, so anyway, so what happened is, is I, I started getting these books, and some of these books are worth uh, substantial um, um, amounts today because they're from the first editions, and they're from some of the forefathers of fly fishing, and it's a wonderful connection. So I learned out of a book because living and growing up in Providence, not that many people back then knew what fly fishing was, uh, never mind learning, uh, getting someone to teach me. So we... We, we did that on our own, and, and it was a, a great experience. I totally agree with that sentiment. Um, it is really important to convey that message to our students. Yes, absolutely it is. So when, where, and how did you get started in doing volunteer work for the Division in Fish and Wildlife Aquatic Resource Education Programs? Dana, I, I got to tell you that um, it's almost uh, maybe 30, 31, 32 years ago. And I had started uh, a fly tying program at the Smithfield Sportsman's Club. And uh, we had, it was a very successful program. We had some very, very uh, good tires. Doit and Ladd was there. Uh, also, Bill Peabody was there. Armand Corshain and so, so many others, and it was very, very successful. And we, we were doing that. Uh, I was maybe into it for a couple of years. And then Christine Dudley, okay, who's still, of course, with the agency, yep. called me, and she said, Ed, she said, uh, we have some federal funding to support an aquatic education program, and, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to start the program off in, in, in a fly tying venue. I says, oh, Christine, yeah, I said, I'd, uh, first of all, I'd, I'd really enjoy, I think I would tremendously enjoy that. I'd, I would definitely help you. I know that um, this is something that's, that's needed today uh, in our society, and, and, and there's nothing better than sharing our knowledge to, to educate uh, folks. Uh, the more educated that they are, uh, the more they're going to respect and take care of our resources. So anyway, so I said, all right, Christine. I says, well, when are we going to start? She says, well, she said, I know it's short notice, but can you start next week? We're going to go like every Thursday. Every Thursday night. I says, okay. And so now where, where are we going to do this? She says, well, she said, Ed, uh, we're going to start out in Westerly, Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I said, Christine, I said, I live in northern Rhode Island. I says, I live in, in, in Smithfield, Greenville. A division of Smithfield. She said, oh, I know that. And I understand, but it, but but you think you could? I says, yeah, by all means. So now that was a good over an hour. Yeah. One way for me. So anyway, we started that program. Imagine Dana in in, in Westerly, Rhode Island, thirty <laughs> something years, almost thirty two years ago, when when Christine first uh, knew that these funds were available. So it was very very good. And so uh, after that, I mean, it, it just took off. Uh, the next 15 years or so, uh, Christine and, and myself and so, so hundreds of volunteers within the course of those 15 years, hundreds of, of uh, men and women who do donated their time to these wonderful programs. Uh, and, and, and of course, if it weren't for the uh, volunteers, the people who donated their times. Now, the other thing too, Dana, is that uh, many of these programs, not only were they nights during the week, uh, most of our fly tying was during the winter winter months. And, you know, we would probably start out, let's say, in October and run to December, just before Christmas. There was a lot of, uh, 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 a little, if you would, the word it might be a better word, but a little sacrifice on, on the volunteers' part right. during the winter, the travel and the snow, et cetera, et cetera. But... Um, if it weren't for our volunteers, we could never accomplish what we have over these last 30-some-odd years, and we really appreciate them um, for, for pitching in. So these types of fly tying programs are still going on today, and um, participants can find information on the DEM website by looking up the Aquatic Resource Education Program, 
and they are located at different public libraries throughout the state. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I the very first one that we started locally as far as the libraries were, were my home library, uh, Greenville Library, and that's where Scott um, came and, and he, he, he came there many times with me and uh, he was very impressed with that and Scott did very, Scott Travers, he did very, very well. Um, and so we, uh, we started there and then I was so happy that uh, both you and, and Scott and, and Wes, you know, uh, Wes Wyatt uh, uh, took that over and not only did we, you know, I, I was lucky in a, in a, in a way because I, I just had to travel a, a short distance to go to Greenville. But I, I do understand that uh, over the years uh, recently that, uh, again, uh, both you and Wes and, and, and Scott, you did several libraries across the state of Rhode Island. And that, that was a, a, a commitment that took a lot. We had like, uh, I think it was around 16 libraries at one time. And we yes. nicknamed the program Flybrary. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I mean, that was very, very good. So, and, and the people, especially the especially the, the directors of these libraries, they were always very, very um, uh, amenable to to these these programs. They they knew how important it was, and and it was a great offering for their constituents um, that that would would come to the library so they were really happy about that as a matter of fact uh, the the Greenville library Thor, Dorothy who's the who's who's now the director and she always thanks me for that it was just a wonderful program uh, that that we, we had started there right and um we're always looking for volunteers for not only the fly tying but fly fishing as well yes exactly which is is my, which I'm going to discuss uh, uh, next when we talk about um, some of the programs. So, so what? Just what are the programs? Some of the programs, Dana, that that we we host, and and we 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 uh, 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 advertise uh, throughout through the uh, D D E M uh, website, the Fish and Wildlife. So, some of the programs which have been going on for many many years. Uh, we have a kids program now. It's in its twentieth year. It's uh, for children anywhere from uh, age 10 to 15, 16 at Addie Valise Farm. Now, Addie Valise Farm has been, been hosting these programs uh, for many, many years, like I say, almost 20 years now. And the other, uh, uh, another uh, venue or another program is we also have, that's a freshwater school, and we also have another freshwater school, uh, which we we uh, uh, which both you and I and some of our uh, many of our volunteers we we just got done as the adult uh, program which is available every year at at Addie Valise Farm and and along with that uh, some of the other programs we have been doing um, a program for women with cancer uh, which is um, located in Middletown Rhode Island. And also, we do, a, as a matter of fact, this coming Saturday, we're going to be doing the Veterans Program at, at Deer Creek Farm in Foster, Rhode Island. So there, I understand there's going to be 11 to 12 veterans, and we have, I think, just this, uh, maybe 12, 11 or 12 volunteers, instructors. And, and, and in addition to that, uh, we do um, uh, in, inner city children's programs, and we try to bust them in years ago, and I think we're going to start that again soon. And, and one, of the, um, one of the other things that we have done over the years, which was really a fantastic program, uh, let me just explain what, what this is all about. We did, we did a program called the Fly Fishing Express, and what that was is we uh, actually took our students uh, on a train, and this train went from Newport to Portsmouth, and along the the east eastern sea the eastern uh, coast of the of, of East Bay, uh, and and this went on. We started that program with uh, Kim. Now now let's let's just back up a little bit if I could. Christine Dudley. We started in, I think it was like a, a 92 or 91. And so Christine had, was head of that program for about 15 years. And then when um, Kim was hired, Kim Sullivan, she took the program over. And now I was working and coordinating things with, with, um, with Kim. And then, of course, uh, I, I think now you've been here, what, five or six years 
Okay, you know? Yeah, I started as a volunteer, and now I'm staff, so yep. Yeah, like I said, Kim started, oh, maybe 15 years ago or so. And, and so what we did is uh, she would, at the time, we would advertise in, in local newspapers. As a matter of fact, I would call at the time was Tom Mead, who was the sports writer for, for Outdoors, and now it's, it's Dave Monty. And so I, I uh, will communicate. A lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll send in my fishing report to those two gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Now Tom is retired, and so Dave uh, Monty takes it over. So we would advertise that way there, and it was a wonderful experience. And, and how, it, how did it come about? Um, I've been a, a public servant for 27 years, and two years ago I retired. I was on the... I was with the Department of Labor and Training. I was a, 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 an administrative law judge here in the state of Rhode Island. I was on the Board of Review. And so we had several lawyers working for us at the board. And one of the lawyers that was directly uh, 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 accountable to the, to, to the board was Mr. Dave Albert. And, and um, so anyway, we had a discussion one time, and, and um, Dave was telling me, he said, you know, Eddie, he said, uh, my hobby— uh, um, for years, like, like, you're so passionate about fly fishing. I'm very passionate about trains. I love trains, and I, I, I'm i the president of our uh, uh, railroad out of Newport, our Newport Railroad, that, in fact, um, runs from Newport to Portsmouth. And I said, come back there. Say that again? I said, I, he said, yeah. I said, Dave, I said, from boats. We have I've known that shoreline from boats, but it's very difficult to to get to those that shoreline if you want to wade fish. And I said, you think there's a possibility of we, we want to take a group of people with DEM's aquatic education program. We can take them on, on that train and stop and, and, and fish certain spots. He said, yeah. And he says, we can do that. And so anyway, uh, that, started, that started in 2006 to 2011. And we had several programs, uh, several uh, d departures, both in the early spring and in the fall. And some of the, the, the some of the uh, events in the fall, uh, uh, the, uh, on the train, uh, they would they had pot belly wood burning stoves, and they would light the oh, stoves. Neat. And 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 then of course uh, Kim and her helpers or interns would would set up lunch in the in the, uh, the 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 dinner car. We would have lunch set up a buffet. And so we would stop, periodically we would stop in certain places that we knew that would most likely hold fish. And so we took a lot of pictures. And then at the end of uh, 2011, 2012, we got the sad news that uh, the dinner train out of Newport was interested in buying this. In, in uh, Donald, I'm sorry, his name is Donald Albert. So anyway, we come, come 2012, we had to... Uh, eliminate that program, but we had, uh, we were always full, Dana. It, it was a very popular event and very exciting. Not only did we fish, fly fish with them, but during uh, traveling to certain spots, we would uh, do a small presentation on, of course, equipment, how to use it, you know, uh, what to buy, and of course, what to, as far as the, the, the uh, uh, construction of the leader, the terminal tackle, etc. So it was always was really very very nice, and we also uh, took some nets with us, and we would would uh, in fact try to uh, get some bait fish or, 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 or crustaceans to show them what's 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 available in the salt water. And the other thing about our programs, let's talk, let's back up a little bit as far as maybe the kids' day at Addyville and the adults program, and of course what we're going to do this coming Saturday with the veterans at, at Deer Creek Farm. I'll give an idea of, uh, I don't know if I'm walking ahead a little bit, as far as what the itinerary is for these cat, these classes. We start off with an introduction to all, uh, we thank all the hosts, such as um, Trout Unlimited, of course, for helping with the food all the time, and, and it, 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 some of the programs. Also, uh, Rody Fly Rodders, which is a, of, of, of the oldest uh, saltwater fly fishing school in the country. Also, United Fly Tires of Rhode Island, a, a lot of those people there will, which I've been a member for from its, its inception, and I've been a member of all these organizations for many years. Uh, also, um, the, the Wood River Fly Fishing Association, <clears throat> they also help out uh, tremendously. 
Friends of the Blackstone also helped out for many years. Uh, again, uh, we, we, we do those introductions and thank everybody. And of course, we would always thank uh, Addie Valise Farm for, for hosting these programs. And of course, now come Saturday, uh, Dr. Bonanno, Bob Bonanno donates his uh, Deer Creek Farm. I think that's been, this is going to be like the 12th year that we're going to be doing that. And so he, he uh, so graciously gives us breakfast and our lunches and he cooks on the grill and he's, we've got a lot of good volunteers there. So anyway, so we start out with the introductions and then we'll, uh, uh, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll do a basic entomology uh, exhibit. And so anyway, what we do is we'll take our, our students uh, uh, down to the pond and, and we'll put up what we call a, a little uh, a catch screen against uh, on the bottom of the surface and someone will take a, a regular garden rake and rake all the debris onto the screen and we take the screen and we would go and all the students are going to gather around and, and we'll, we'll we'll take all the insects that we gather a lot of times we'll we'll gather and we have a little white plate with a little bit of water in it and we'll take these these um these uh, aquatic insects a lot of times we'll come up with um, dragonfly nymphs and damselfly nymphs and mayfly nymphs. <clears throat> um, also, sometimes you'll we'll come up with a, um, a, a, a a Dobson fly nymph. So there's so many wonderful uh, 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 creatures and aquatic insects, and, and and especially the kids. And the other word that I always use with the children, the youngsters that come to Kids Day, is I tell them that. Everyone here knows what the word metamorphosis means, okay, because of the, the shows they see on television and the movies with, the, I guess, Transformers, et cetera, and say, oh, no, their eyes light up when we talk about, we talk about this subject of metamorphosis. And so I say, these insects, okay, their life, lives depend on metamorphosis. They change, they literally change from a, 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 a water-breeding through gills, water breeding uh, animals or insects, and they Mother Nature tells them in a certain time when the water temperature reaches maybe 55 or 60, they come to the surface and they, they emerge into an air breathing insect. Mother Nature is fascinating when it comes to that, and and so you'll see that uh, uh, these nymphal stage is so so much different looking than the actual adults. Now, of course, we all know with a um, a damsel fly nymph. Uh, adult looks like They're very similar to a dragonfly nymph it's like we call them needle of course the little needle flying through the air some of them are blue some of them are red those are the damsel flies so all these different things so so it's just wonderful so we after we do the the, the brief uh, presentation for uh, um, uh, our, our basic entomology we come back and we we uh, uh, actually have them tie flies okay uh, they'll tie a uh, what we call a woolly bugger, which imitates a, a variety of, of forage that the fish feed on, some bait fish and some some of these aquatic uh, insects as well. And so they have a great time. They they'll, they'll tie at least uh, at least two flies, and 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 then of course the the exciting thing is they take those flies and they actually later on after lunch uh, they're going to fish with those flies. And then uh, the other part, another venue is we show them basic uh, knots that they're going to need. Uh, for fly tying and, and, and getting their equipment ready and tying on flies. And then we break for lunch. It's a wonderful lunch. And most, most of the time, um, your, your group or, or your agency here, Dana, along with Kim, you guy you guys will order box lunches. And, 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 you know, for $15, everybody gets a box lunch. And, and of course, I'm being very facetious. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bargain of a lifetime. You know, they sign up and they're getting this wonderful instruction. And all, all we ask of them is to, to pay for their box lunch, which is like $15. And, and when we talk about the adult program, it's the same thing. It's the same format. We, we go over the same same venues and, um, of course, with the uh, basic entomology. Oh, one thing I also I couldn't forget. We also do extensive uh, fly casting training. Okay, we cast, we, we teach them how to, how to use a fly rod and what the fly line does. And uh, so we, we give them an education on why that rod works the way it does and through a, a very um, comprehensive explanation on, on fly casting. 
Excellent. Yeah. And those, uh, those box lunches are not just peanut butter and jelly <laughs> yeah. between two pieces of white bread. They're really good lunches. Oh, they're wonderful. You know, they're absolutely wonderful lunches. Rocks Market puts those out for us. Yes. Is it Rocks? Usually Rocks. Um, sometimes we do Tom's Market as well. Both oh, of yes, them yes. Um, are excellent. Yes. Uh, we work extensively with both of those markets. And just the instruction that they receive um, is really top notch. It is. Um, it's kind of neat to relate the fly that we're tying back to the entomology based on the season and it's in a it. timely fashion for what's emerging. In addition to our freshwater schools, we do a saltwater school. And usually we'll, we'll take our students to the Narrow River in Narragansett. And also, a lot of times, we'll also take them to the uh, 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 Charleston Breachway, and we'll do a saltwater school, which is, which is basically uh, some of the same venues uh, as far as cat learning, teaching them how to cast a, a, a saltwater fly rod. And, of course, we talk about the forage, and we'll show them what, what, what baits are available and what time of the year they'll, they'll, they'll be available to the fish. Uh, and we're basically... Um, uh, looking for a striped bass and, and a hickory and American shad. So it's, it's a wonderful experience. You know, Little Rhode Island has some of the best, if not the best, tidal rivers in all of New England. People come from all over the country, and even people from Europe will come to fish some of our tidal rivers because they, they're easy accessible, they're nice to wade, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful experience to catch striped bass and sometimes an occasional bluefish and these hickory, these hickory shad are what we call poor man's uh, uh, salmon. They jump and they leap, and and, <laughs> and once in a while we'll we'll end up with some uh, American shad, which are a lot much larger. That's a very, very big part of our our programs is the, the saltwater school as well. So something we ask all of our podcast guests is if you have a funny or interesting story or stories from your experience out in the field with us. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad you asked that question. Let me give you a little idea of what happened. Many years ago at, at one of the adult um, fly fishing schools at, at Addyville, not not known to me, uh, but I had some of my very good friends who were uh, members of Addyville East Farm. They were in the fly fishing club there, and they would always help me volunteer. They would do the volunteer work, along with other volunteers that we have used from the, all the other organizations I had mentioned. And so at lunchtime, these two gentlemen approached the class, and they said, look, we're going we're gonna to play a little trick on Ed Lombardo today. <laughs> And uh, they, so all the class, all the adults, all the class, they knew it was coming and I didn't. They waited for me during lunch. I, I either went to the office or I went to my car, but they, they waited for me so that I wasn't present. So anyway, so we're after lunch, like we always do with these schools, whether it's kids or, or veterans, after lunch, we get everyone together and we take them to the pond and we actually fish. They'll, they'll, they'll take the flies that they tied and, and we'll fish. And so now at this particular time, now you got to understand Addyville East Farm, their pond is about 10 acres. And so I was on the far end of the pond here and these two, these two uh, volunteers and a, and a couple of the students were on the other side. And all of a sudden, I'm fishing and I'm helping a, a student. And as a matter of fact, I had two students with me and we're fishing, we're catching fish. And all of a sudden, I hear a hollering and screaming and they're saying, this is unbelievable. Look at this. Look at the size of this fish. Now, let me just back up a little bit. They know that I'm a, I'm a fanatic about how you handle fish. As a matter of fact, a lot yeah. of times during our course, we'll tell people how to handle them because we, we practice catch and release. Right. And so now they're, they're, um, they're hollering and screaming. They look at the size of this fish. Look at the size of this fish. And so I'm looking, I'm looking. And I look at the size. says, yeah, give him a drink. So when I say give him a drink, that means that put the fish in the water, keep him in the water, and then pull him up lightly, you know, just for a short time so you can take a picture of it. Put, put the fish back in the water. And, I, I, and that, that's, what I'm, that's what I mean when I say give that fish a drink, give the fish... And so I'm starting to go, I'm walking fast. I want to go see it. He said, this fish must be two feet long. It's unbelievable. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, I hear bang, bang, bang. 
I had three shots fired. Oh gosh. And I says, What's going what's going on? <laughs> this fish is so big, this guy Peter yells out, This fish is so big we had to shoot it. <laughs> oh my. Oh wow. So so listen. So I says, now I'm 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 furious. I fr- I says, first of all, what's a handgun doing with these uh, <laughs> here? So make a long story short, I get there, Dana and it's a frozen stiff salmon. <laughs> a frozen stiff salmon that they had gotten out of Pulaski, New York, the Salmon River. And now I gotta tell you about Peter Peter this gentleman Peter. His son and his daughters were always avid um, athletes, and they were always do. They would always participate both uh, college and, and uh, both uh, high school and college in track meets. And so he had a uh, he had a um, what do they call it? Um, oh, one of those starter pistols. Starter pistols. Yep. Right. It, it was like a, a blank shoe, a blank gun. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so I said, "Oh, you guys, I can't believe you." So it was. Uh, it was a it was a funny thing, and because they knew uh, how passionate I was to, to you know you got to know how to handle these fish, and here they are, they're handling this fish like that, and they're taking it out of the water. Oh, wow. So I get there, and this fish this it was a it was a, a silver it was a Chinook salmon, and uh, so Christine Christine couldn't believe it. So so um, it was a it was a good 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 story, a funny story. So I'll tell you one more if we have time. Absolutely. Uh, this particular year, uh, we were at Dr. Bonanno's uh, Deer Creek Farm, and we were doing a, a program for um, a woman with cancer. And this had we had done we were doing this for maybe eight or nine years. One of the saddest things about doing these programs every year is that a lot of the ladies that we had done the previous year just just weren't around, and it was a sad situation. So anyway, so. I always tried to, uh, one of the main things that, or let's say the main thing about our programs, Dana, as you know, first of all, we want to educate our students and we want to let them have a good time at these classes. Right. We want to have them enjoy themselves and let them feel really comfortable. Yep. So after a while in all schools that we do, after like like two or three hours the first time, you know, the first sessions that we do and we'll have lunch and so now we you get to know the personalities of the students and so this particular woman uh allison who had cancer and um you you could tell right away that she's a good sport okay and and so i would um when i saw that i would pick on that particular woman okay that she i knew that she could take it right and so a lot of times uh like so so she was casting and a lot of times when she was casting she would break her wrist and, and the, the fly would hit the grass behind her, mm-hmm. okay? And sometimes she would even get caught in the shrubs or on the grass. And I'd say, Allison, I says, you know, Allison, you know, you're absolutely killing me, Allison. <laughs> I says, you're, you're killing me. I said, all this training, you, I can't take it. And she says, well, I'm trying, Ed, I'm trying. I says, well, I, I'm going to work with you a little bit more. He says, okay. I says, and so I says, oh, we'll work. And so then I'd say, a few minutes go by and I leave. And then she hit the grass. She says, Alice, you're still killing me. You're, you're killing me. I, she says, I, I says, I love you as a student, but you, you, you get me. She says, well, I'm trying. I'm trying, Ed. And, and, uh, I, but, you know, it's funny. Uh, I'm catching fish. I'm still catching fish. I says, I know you are. I know you are, but we're going to get your cash then. So anyway, I'm working with this other woman. Okay, I'm casting with this woman. So I'm casting, I'm casting. And don't you think I get caught in the shrubs behind me? Of course you do. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And so now, Allison, now, now you've got to understand this. As, we, as you know, the water carries your voices, yeah. right? How it carries your voices. Mm-hmm. Now, I've got all the ladies. There's like a dozen women with all instructors. So I get caught. And so Allison turns around and she says, you know, Ed, you're killing me. <laughs> she says, Ed, you're killing me. And, and we, thought it was, we thought it was a great time and, and, and fun. So uh, uh, at the end of that, we would always give them their certificates of, of uh, completion. Yeah, so anyway, uh, we, 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 over the years, we've had so many wonderful experiences, and that's just a few. <laughs> 
Yeah, those are really good. Those yeah. are funny. Yeah, aren't they funny? Oh my goodness. I can't even imagine the look on your face when you heard those gunshots. <laughs> oh my now here I am. I'm said I you know you know how things go through your mind. We're yeah. all gonna get we're all gonna get in trouble. Right. With the state of Rhode Island. Of course. Our, our programs are all over. Yep. Right, here's someone a volunteer shooting a pistol. <laughs> right? And I said I said, Oh my goodness, I said, but but that was I tell you, that, they got me good. They got me good, so um, and then of course, Alice and God bless her soul. She, uh, she got me back to over the past 30 years or more in helping to administer these programs. What's the most satisfying accomplishment you feel that you and many of your colleagues have achieved? Great question. I, um, because we're so passionate about this sport and, and one of the reasons why we are so passionate, as I said earlier, Dana, we practice catch and release, okay? We want to preserve the resources for as long as we possibly can for future generations. And that's all part of it. And we, we actually know that uh, the more, edu- in, in, any, in, in most any walk of life, we know that the, the more people are educated to a specific area, a specific topic, they're going to respect the resource. And so what, we, what I, I, I really now, I'm talking about, in this length of time, both before I had a fly fishing school at Alton Jones for many years, uh, that beautiful campus there, and doing presentations at different shows, um, the fly fishing shows uh, throughout uh, New England, and always always, uh, trying to to, to educate people uh, in in the right way to to preserve and, and, and enjoy the uh, the fly fishing uh, venue that we have. And like I said earlier, of course, fly fishing puts us in 95% of the time, they, they puts us into wonderful, wonderful places. So, so th- the satisfaction is that I know that our team, our team here at DEM, okay, with the aquatic education program for Chris, from Christine Dudley, Kim Sullivan, and you, Dana, and, and so many literally hundreds of volunteers and literally thousands, thousands of students in this course of, uh, you know, thousands of students. Um, we feel very good that, number one, we, we, we hope that they would pursue the sport. And even if they didn't, we gave them a, a little idea of just how precious basic entomology is. We show them what that is and how, how precious and, and how delicate the uh, nature can be, and, and to respect nature, and, and to make it a better place, and, and, and that's what I get. My, my um, gratitude for, for all these people and, and all the uh, instructors, and it's just the message that, um, to number one, to be educated, which we did, and for them to enjoy uh, through uh, an educated site, and then hopefully to pursue it. So I, I think I think that's that's what's made it so wonderful for me. And I mean that so sincerely. I, I, I actually I, I enjoy teaching. I enjoy guiding, and passing uh, uh, this passion on to people. So um, it's a big 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 part. It's been a, a a big part of my life. All my life I've uh, I've been involved with fly fishing and teaching, both fresh and salt water. I mean, for years, I've been so le- so so blessed. I, I've been going out to Montana with groups uh, for over 34 years, and, and it stopped the last couple of years because of COVID. But um, my wife really is a sweetheart. You know, she allows me. I've been doing this a long time. So, but anyway, um, in a long a long uh, answer, that's 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 what I have as far as that question is concerned. I would agree. Serving with a purpose of environmental awareness and enjoying Rhode Island's beautiful resources is what it's all about. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly true. In closing, I'd like to say, uh, please uh, pass this on, uh, which uh, which you heard today, uh, as far as our website is concerned. Uh, Look at our website. Uh, We post uh, all of the programs that are upcoming and you've got to understand, here it is June, it's early June or, or mid-June, um, and, and some of the saltwater schools, we're going to have at least 
I think, two saltwater schools coming up in the fall. The other thing is, uh, I'm glad I just remembered, we're going to have a program on the 7th of, of July uh, for the uh, hexagenal and beta hatch. And what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, hold a class here at Campy Hunty, this particular office site, one night, it'll probably be from 6 to 9 or so maybe 5.30 or 6 to, to 8.30, something like that. It's going to be posted. And everything you want to learn or everything you want to know about the hex hatch here, which is a fascinating hatch in Little Rhode Island, uh, Wood River has. Uh, the hex hatch is, is the largest North American mayfly um, in, in, in the world. And, and Little Rhode Island has it. Uh, and, and it's a fascinating a thing to experience and, and not only are you going to learn uh, what this hatch is and how it emerges and what these flies look like I'm going to give a, a brief slide presentation and also you're going to learn how to tie the more uh, vulnerable uh, stages of the hex hatch and and so this is something that uh, all of those who, who really want to learn more about this this fascinating uh, event that happens you can almost set your watch that it's going to happen but right about now, the 14th, 15th of June, and it lasts sometimes all the way to August. Uh, so, so, and it peaks. It, it peaks July, the week of July 4th. So if you, 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 know, you want to learn about this, this is um, it's a good message, and, and, and I'm sure that you're going to have instruction on how you can attend and fill out an application or whatever. So I'm glad we brought that up. And of course, if anyone has questions about any of the programs or classes upcoming or to inquire about volunteering, feel free to email me, Dana Kopeck, at D-A-N-A dot K-O-P-E-C dot C-T-R at D-E-M dot R-I dot G-O-V. Thank you, Ed, for coming on to the podcast this month. It has been a pleasure as always. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. The Information Nation can be found on all major platforms such as Spotify, Apple iTunes, Podomatic, and more. See you all next month.